What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the day that we're going to try and figure out what is going on with 8-Ball and why it no longer works. The truck's actually at Next Level Performance's new shop and that's where we're headed right now. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new location and the new face of Next Level Motorworks. And you might be saying to yourself, well Jack, that looks awfully familiar. Well, it's because you're exactly right, it is. This is the back of what is the old Lime Ridge Automotive, still the same lot at Lime Ridge. Lime Ridge hasn't moved far. They just moved across the street. That's gonna be the primary location of Lime Ridge and the front office of Lime Ridge as we've known it over the last few years is still going to exist as they're transitioning, but there's a lot of really epic changes up here and I'm so unbelievably stoked about it. They're not quite done their transition yet, but they will be here by the end of the year and the new Lime Ridge is going to be right next door. And then that brings us to the other change, which is Next Level Motorworks' new location, which is the shop that was behind Lime Ridge. So we're gonna head on inside. Tyler gave me a call a few minutes ago and he said he just got eight ball in on the lift. Let's see where he's at. In a matter of a few minutes, Tyler's already got the Firepunk Trans out of eight ball, and we're still at a point of unknown. We have absolutely no idea what's wrong with it. We did note that there's a little bit of an odd and peculiar smell coming from the transmission oil. That's likely because we've definitely used the utmost lubricity out of that fluid. This trans has seen a lot in the short time that it's been in eight ball, so I'm not really surprised that anything happened, but we still don't know exactly what it could be. So we were faced with a crossroad at this point in time, meaning that we have the trans and the converter separated. We can either try to pull the trans apart and try and diagnose and then rebuild it ourselves, or we just send it back to those that have handled it last, which is over at Fire Punkin. And, and that's the direction that we chose to go. We're gonna put it back in the hands of its creator, if you will, and then they can go through it, make sure that they figure out exactly Exactly what's wrong with it get it put back together in full and functioning form and then we can get it back in the truck as soon as we possibly can well, I'll tell you what from an exterior perspective this thing's looking really good they've got that notorious gold firepunk paint on it and then we have the firepunk extra deep pan as well I am curious as to whether or not there's any metal shavings in there but for all intents and time purposes we're actually just gonna get this thing packed up on a skid and we are gonna get it headed out to Ohio it's kind of a funny ironic story and symphony happening at this point in time but there's actually a skid that I had had in the back of 8-Ball for a while. This was from a delivery of some other parts that I had. I never took it out of the truck and well, it's actually going to help us today by carrying our trans out to Ohio. So all things considered, it's a mystery at this point in time. We have no verdict, but I'm sure our friends over at Firepunk are going to keep us posted. Now it's pretty cool that Next Level Motorworks is now located in the back of what is the current but will be the old building for Lime Ridge. They're still selling vehicles out of the front of the building if you've ever been here before and I know a lot of you have taken time out to visit and by trucks from Lime Ridge, which is absolutely awesome, but they're gonna be transitioning over probably by the new year to the new building, and Next Level Motorworks will be right here, and this is where you guys are gonna find them. There's actually a lot of work that I did out of that very bay right there. If we bring it back for one very fond memory, which was Dream Diesel Giveaway number one, we actually did the whole Whirly Fab Piping Wide Bridge and High Flow Kit for DDG number one right there in that bay. So every time I step in here, man, the memories are so surreal. Fits on there like a freaking glove. It was meant to be. Now before we're headed to our next destination. I just want to give you guys a quick glimpse at what will be the new Lime Ridge. Mind you, it's still a work in progress, but you guys are going to be able to see the potential. This is absolutely 
absolutely sick to see all the work that's gone into transforming what used to be a newspaper printing business, right? Next, the Lime Ridge Automotive's original location transform into Lime Ridge version two. The transformation isn't 100% complete. They're probably about 90 to 95%. And it's really cool to see not only this transformation happening as they're evolving in their space, but also our transition that's happening with the new pole building project. A lot of us have been very busy and it's not just with truck builds. We've got Steve over here running the operation. He's now got three lifts to choose from with what it is that he's doing over here. We've got a few dodges up on the lifts today. Kind of an ironic timing to say the least because we've got the eight ball theme in this video, but I'm sure that the problems that these dodges are facing aren't as nearly as serious as my problems. All right, boys and girls, now we're at our next location, which is none other than the one and only Accelerate Auto here off Harrisburg Pike in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And we're greeted with one of the very new body style Yukon Denali's. These things are really sexy. I was trying to convince Miss Dirty Max to get one of these over the Jeep, but she's very loyal to the Jeep life. And I can't blame her for that. Popping the freedom panels off is absolutely epic. But I'll tell you what, these things with their premium 22 inch wheels look absolutely incredible. And one of my favorite characteristics, well, of course, is the front end kind of resembles mine here on Misfit, but there's something very different. If I bring you guys forward, you're gonna see on Misfit that their lights have a lot of chrome in them. There's a little bit of black on the inside of the bezel, but there's not all that much. You guys can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Amber on the side, DOT requirement, it is what it is. We can't get around it, and of course, unless we customize them, of course. But a little bit of black on the inside, but none other than a lot of chrome. If we come on over to the Denali, they actually completely changed up the inside of the headlight and the exterior surround. It's almost like they've been watching the Dirty Max Jack YouTube channel. Rather than having the amber, that solid facing lens on the exterior, what they do is they make the amber as part of the light on the inside, which looks really cool. And then what's even cooler is they have somewhat paint matched surrounding so it's almost like they're built headlights from the factory jam you're welcome i used to work for you guys i know you're watching my youtube channel and you're taking all the hints and then you're incorporating them into your factory design making us aftermarket guys seem like peasants but it is what it is youtube's a free platform and i can't stop you from doing that but i know you're doing it anyway and then what they also did is they incorporated switchbacks from the factory so you got your running light just like misfit has but then when you switch your turn signal this switch is back to an amber it's not a complete coincidence it's 100 percent plant Anything we show this lesson. Love it. We're here to pick up the final components of the Lone Star build. We've got our paint match Chevy badge surround, and then we actually have our second set of high country custom painted one-off badges. You can see the background doesn't look all that nice, but don't worry about that. It's the actual plastic that matters. The reason why is because the other ones got damaged in transport, which I talk about a lot in the videos, moving parts from my shop to Brody's to Peach Bottom and everywhere else in between. And unfortunately we had two casualties of the high country badges that were painted the first time around. But fortunately, Sean is the man and worked these into his schedule. And then I gotta give a big shout out to my boy Gio, who actually introduced me to Sean way back in the day when Sean and I had first met, who actually brought them up here because he just got some paint matching done on his 2020 Denali. So Gio, thank you very much, my man. Would you think I was lying when I told you that we just did probably about 23 revolutions in my NASCAR driveway, turning nothing but left to cross 14,000 miles in the AT4, and you know what? We succeeded. We did. It's 14,000. Probably one of my most proud accomplishments. Now, speaking of proud accomplishments, we've got some accomplishing that we have to do at the building today to prepare for the next steps, and that is this exterior door. we got to get this thing hung.
Guys, is that you? I've been lost in the woods for like two weeks. I don't remember what you guys look like. Is that you guys? Oh yeah, it is you guys. Hey, how are you guys doing? It's been a minute since I've seen you. Finally back on the vlog. I can, we're kind of standing like this right now, but yeah, it's been a minute. I've, I've been uh, up in the Colorado Rocky. No, I haven't been in the Colorado Rockies. I've been doing that all week, Ask Jack. I don't know why I've been saying Colorado, but I was in Idaho. And those mountains are steep, boys. Let me tell you, holy crap. So me and two of my good buddies, Josh and Jer, we took a road trip out all the way to Idaho. So let me tell you, from right here, right, this very spot is like way too long of a drive. I think it was like 36 hours in total. But we did it all in one shot, and we got out there and we got some hunting done. Now, we didn't quite get what we were going for, which was a mule deer. I don't think they exist out there. No. So that was only our second year going out west to hunt, so we have a little bit of a learning curve to get through, a little bit of stuff to learn, learn what the animals do, learn how to hunt the terrain, because it's it's not like these nice sprawling hills out here in Pennsylvania. It is straight up and then straight down. Like, it's, it's no joke. I fell like probably 40 times, but we don't need to talk about that. Now, even though we didn't come home with a mule deer, we didn't come home empty-handed. We actually came home with a black bear, which, well, wasn't what we went out to do. At least we're not coming home empty-handed. So we're officially backcountry hunters rather than backcountry hikers, which is pretty cool. Now, guys, on Instagram, I shared a good amount of the trip. Not all of it, but a good amount of the trip. So if you're not following me, be sure to go follow me. You can see my next hunting trip down there. I was lucky enough to get the bear on film. It's not great. It's on an iPhone. I didn't have my camera on me. The bear snuck up on us. We were not expecting it, so it was very you know, all over the place, but. Get him, get him, get him. So throughout the past two weeks, I've been super busy. I lost like 15 pounds when we were out there hiking, which is crazy because I was eating like a cow but I had to hike all that food up, so like, was I really eating that much energy? You know, like, you know, I, I, I lost weight somehow still, but we're here now, and a lot has gotten done in here while I was gone. In case you haven't noticed, we got some of those. And that's light, which means we got electricity, and we have some wires ran, which is way different. And wanna know what else is way different from when I was here last? Oh my gosh. We have a concrete pad. Almost feels like a shop in here now. Wow! So yeah, it's 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 come a long way. We got the drywall in here all drying up. It's all it's uh blocked off right now so we can retain a little bit of heat. It's actually supposed to get down to freezing here tonight in Pennsylvania, which is great for the hunters, but if you don't like the cold, sorry, it's not gonna be great. But for hunting it's gonna be fantastic. Speaking of hunting, look at that freaking Well, boys and girls, I am glad to be back. That is gonna be where we wrap up today's upload. Ooh, that lighting is orange. That is gonna be where we wrap up today's upload. DDG 21 is right around the corner, and wow, this truck. Where do I even, where do I even start with it? You're not gonna wanna miss it. That's where I'm gonna start with it. It's right around the corner, so stay tuned. It's gonna be coming up soon. But, oh God, there's so many deer back here. Should I go get the bow? I think they're dope, but they're huge. So guys, I gotta get home and eat some dinner, so thank you all for tuning in. Like League, do what you guys do best, and we'll see you all in the next upload.